All right, we're ready to uh, bend up and glue our uh, fishing nets. I've gone ahead and cut a handle. I've cut it from eight quarter walnut. Uh, marked a center line on the end of it so I can line it up with the center line on my jig. I've added an extension to the jig to support the handle while I have while I'm doing the glue up. Uh, since the jig, this extension is not um, finished or don't have any wax on it, I put a piece of wax paper over it right here to keep our keep us from gluing our gluing our handle to the uh, to the jig. So uh, after I cut the cut the handle, I went ahead to the drum sander and I, I cleaned up all these ed edges on the inside and cleaned down the sides about to where the handles where the of the outside benders, bends are going to go, so uh, that's ready to go. Uh, what I did was on the jig, I took a piece of just some regular old paraffin from the grocery store, like you'd use for canning or whatever, and basically just rubbed it all over the jig anywhere where it, it um, might get glue. Uh, I rubbed on the edge, a little on the top. Apologize for the noise. My neighbors decided to mow his lawn exactly the time that I decided to do this. But uh, then on the on the call pieces, I went ahead and I rubbed it on the inside, on there, and on the top, the bottom, basically anywhere where it could get glue on it that might um, stick everything together. I put the paraffin on it, and that'll that in combination with the finish we put on will help us um, get the fishing net off after we're uh, after we get it glued up. Um, what I'm going to use is uh, Gorilla Glue, it's polyurethane glue. I'm going to put some in this little jar and, and I'm going to brush it onto the, um, onto the strips as we go ahead and glue them up. Uh, as far as the uh, handle goes, what I do is I put that on there and I uh, line up my center line and then we actually just put a C-clamp on it to, to hold it. We don't want it moving while we're uh, while we're gluing things up, we want it tied up to the, to the jig, lined up on the center line, and tighten that down. That'll keep our handle where we want it when we get ready to start doing the glue up. So let me get my gloves on, get some glue into the little uh, jar here, and we'll go ahead and get started uh, gluing up these ring, gluing up the uh, fishing net. All right, well, this first strip um, goes on there, but I don't put any glue on, we'll put the glue on the inside. What I did do is I went ahead and, and uh, because this glue likes to glue in the presence of moisture, I went ahead and wiped the outside of each of each piece with uh, some water, just some water. So we got the, the first one on there. Now the trick is to get the, the glue on this one without getting it all over, which is nearly impossible. This this glue is, um, it affords us some quite a bit of open time, but it certainly, um, it certainly makes a mess. So you wanna you wanna wear gloves. Um, make sure that you protect yourself because it, 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 once you get it on, you can't get it off. It, it is really uh, makes a mess and it's some sticky stuff. The good news is it expands. I don't know about thirty or forty percent. So um, it you don't necessarily need to get it on every little bit of the. Of the project here, it can, it'll um, actually expand out and uh, foam up and fill everything up. So it'll be uh, it actually uh, works to our advantage of filling some gaps if we have any, which hopefully we don't. But um, like I said, and it gives us quite a bit of open time. We could have used uh, like Tight Bond Three or something like that, which is also a waterproof glue. But I don't know. This this uh, seemed like the glue to use on this project. So. Uh, plus, I like the fact that it expands out and um, fills up some gaps. All I got to do now is keep from getting a, hitting myself in the face with the thing with the glue all over it. So, last thing I want to do is glue myself to the fishing net. All right. Okay, we got that on there. It's the first one. Well, that'll go on the outside here as long as we got the right side up with our. With our um, center line, so we'll have a chance to move everything around once we uh, once we get ready with the uh, gluing. So that's basically the process. So I'm just going to go ahead and keep gluing these things up and. Uh,
come back and show you when we got it all done. It's uh, certainly a certainly a challenge. So. All right, like I said, I'm going to proceed ahead, and I'll come back once I get this all glued up. All right, we got all the glue on our strips. What we're going to do is give these a, a little bend around here first and try to keep our center lines lined up. Uh, I'm going to put a clamp around this bottom just to hold everything in, kind of in place while we go ahead and uh, start putting the calls on. So we'll, we'll put a clamp there and try and keep these as even as we can. This is a messy process. This glue, man, I mean, once it gets on you, you're out of luck. So um, we'll put our first top call on. Get a clamp here and put that on there. That'll start squeezing everything down the way we want it. We'll put that one on there. We'll get the other one on the other side. That one there. Like as I said, I, I think I said before, this uh process of using these calls actually saves quite a bit on the number of clamps and stuff that you have to use so uh, that's that's a handy thing it's uh, puts pretty even pressure on everything uh, we'll keep going kind of work ourselves around here the glue starting to foam up already. Now you can see it on the see it on the camera now, but it's starting to foam out. Like I said it's we got a fair amount of working time with it, so we're not not too concerned, but we don't want to dawdle either and wind up having the thing glued the way we don't want it. So this is the tricky one down here at the bottom, getting these two on. And getting them on so that they uh, fairly even. I think I'll start, start with this one and try and squeeze this side in here a little bit. There we go. That's temporary. Once I start putting a clamp across this bottom piece here, it'll start bringing in some of this stuff the way we want it. That's as much as we need to do with this. We just need to let the glue dry, which will take it a couple of hours, and uh, we'll be able to pop this thing out of the uh, out of the form and see how we did. All right. Well, it's been several hours since we've uh, glued up our fishing nets, and uh, glue is set up pretty good. It's nice. The foam is all dried up and everything. So we're going to go ahead and take it out of the clamps and see what we can come up with. Let's see. Hopefully this thing with a, with a minimum amount of uh, persuasion will actually come out of the form. All right, there we go. Take a seat. 
screw clamp off the handle. We got a putty knife here to give us a little persuasion. There we go. Should we need it? There, so we'll just take our putty knife and work our way around the uh, bottom of this. say we got a little cleaning up to do if you can see that but a lot of that dry glue scrapes off yeah you know, pops off like that and uh, what we'll do is clean it up with a scraper or something and then um, we'll take and run it through the drum sander and clean off all the uh, clean off all the glue and the wax paper that's stuck to it and everything else and we'll have a nice uh, Nice fishing net. So that's how we do that. We we would have been. I mean, without with that shellac we put on the form and with the uh, with the uh, paraffin wax. I mean, it, there's no way that stuff's going to stick to it. So um, so far we were successful. All right. Well, we finished running it through the drum sander and I sanded it down to seven eighths of an inch thickness. Uh, it was a little too thick for the, the width, so I got it down to 7 eighths. Uh, we got a nice tight fitting between all the all the uh, strips or tight, uh, it's tight to the handle. Uh, the next thing to do is to take it to the oscillating spindle sander and clean up the glue on the outside and the inside. And then we get ready to shake the handle. There's still some glue down here on this bottom part, but um, that's all going to get cut off anyway, so it doesn't make any difference. So. Okay, let's see where we are on this project. I went ahead and made a half-inch MDF, MDF template for the handle. Um, I didn't want to take any chances of trying to do it freehand, and, and uh, so this template will come in handy maybe in the future even. Uh, so then I drew the took and I drew the uh, outline of the template onto the handle. Uh, I added a few pieces of walnut and ash down here at the bottom so we can get a little flare on the handle. Uh, I've sanded it through 180 to grit. Um, the drum sander had 100 grit on it. Uh, then I hand sanded it with 120 to get out the scratches from the 100 grit. And then um, I sanded it with uh, 180. Uh, and that's probably will be my final grit to, to sand it. Um, I may do 220, I don't know yet. Um, what I did then was wipe it all down with mineral spirits. One, it cleans off the sawdust, but two, it gives us an idea of what the uh, project is going to look like, so this is always an exciting time when you get to that point. Um, what's next is uh, we need to go ahead and round over the edges of these, of this with a quarter inch round over bit. Um, Got to get that set up in the router table, and then we'll uh, go ahead and round those over, and then do some more sanding on it. Uh, probably be all hand sanding at that point. I won't do any, I won't use any sanders or anything and like I said I'll probably just finish with a 180 grit so coming out good <laughs>
Okay, it's time to cut the grooves in the side of our uh, fishing nets so we can uh, inlay the string and sew on the, sew on the net bag. What I have in the router table is a slack cutting bit with an eighth inch cutter on it. Uh, I want an eighth inch or, or so um, groove. I have it set so that it's seven sixteenths above the table, which is uh, approximately centered on the thickness of the net, which are which are seven eighths. Problem with this bit is it doesn't have any bearings, uh, top or bottom, for the slot cutter to ride on. So normally this would be used with a fence um, going across here, and we and it would uh, set the depth of the cut. But we can't use the fence because the uh, the hoops are curved. Uh, we can't make a curved temporary fence because the hoop's not exactly a circle. It's more of a teardrop shape. So what I did was I made this uh, I made this jig, which which is uh, going to go over. It's got a it's going to go over top of the bit. It's got a one and an eighth inch hole drilled in it so that it can set on top of the top of the router bit like that. Uh, I got a center line drawn on it. I'll center it up with the uh, center line on the bit and then I'll move it back and forth until I get uh, an eighth of an inch sticking out or the cutter sticking out because I want the groove to be an eighth of an inch deep uh, so then what we'll do is we'll rub the uh, rub the fishing net on this curved portion of our jig and we'll cut a one eighth inch uh, deep groove approximately centered on the uh, on the fishing net so I'll get that clamped onto the router table and come back when we get ready to make a cut. Okay, well this is where the rubber meets the road, so I've uh, made a couple of marks on each side of the fishing net where I want to start and stop the, the cut. Um, might not be exact. I might have to clean it up with a chisel. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and start the router up, and we'll take the uh, the mark I made, and we'll line it up with the center point of the um, of the jig, and we'll push that on there, and then spin it around, and flip it over, and then do the other side, and then that should give us a center groove. I decided I wanted a little bit wider than uh, eighth of an inch because I'm using an eighth of an inch drill bit so I'm shooting for a three sixteenth inch groove around the side here so now let's see how we do it's um, more than a little bit nerve-wracking and it's also going to get noisy so uh, we'll uh, give it a go here Take a little sandpaper and clean the edges up. Let's see if we got close to the dimension we wanted. And let's see. Yeah, we're a little over three sixteenths, which is going to be fine. So that's how we uh, that's how we go ahead and cut the groove in the fishing net for the uh, for the string that'll that'll uh, hold our net on. Okay, the next thing we did, need to do is get ready to drill our holes into the side through our groove so we can um, sew on the net. What I've done is taken a piece of maybe, uh, I guess it's 8 inch thick MDF, which is very pliable, and I've gone ahead and I've marked off 1 inch increments all the way around it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap this around, around our... Um, fishing net and I got a couple of marks where I want to start it so what I'll do is I'll put a couple of little spring clamps on it to hold it against the shape of the net all right so now I got everything where I want it I'm just going to go ahead and 
go around and mark the, uh, the one inch increments for our holes that we're going to drill. Okay. All right. That's that. I'll take this off of here. Now I have my marks here. What I'll do is I'll just take and by eye extend these marks down to the to the groove so that when I put it on the jig I got something to go by to to line it up. So now that we have those marked, we'll get the drill press out and get ready to drill those holes. All right, well, here's our jig for drilling holes in our uh, fishing nets. What it is is a piece of three-quarter MDF. It's about 16 inches long or so. It's got two dowels that are uh, drilled, quarter-inch dowels that are drilled uh, in it and put in holes there. They're about an inch or so apart on center. I got an eighth-inch drill bit uh, to drill it. Uh, there's an L-shaped piece of MDF that comes off the back, and that's put on with some screws. Uh, and I have all that clamped to the drill press table which is swung to the right uh, so that we can actually get the fishing net underneath of the drill bit. The idea is that you take the fishing net and you put it on the two dowels um, and then we can go ahead after that and you can line up the drill with the uh, with the marks and as long as we keep our keep our um, fishing net fast to these two dowels here um, should be should work all right we'll go actually go all the way around uh, we can actually cut those that are all the way around on the edge and and uh, we keep it and it should give us a fairly straight hole through the through the net um, the only thing I'm worried about is tear out when I the bit exits through the bottom of the frame there uh, I'm not sure exactly how I would back that up at this moment. I might be able to put a piece of flexible MDF or a little thin strip MDF or something under it, but I'm not sure that that would actually keep it from tearing out. So I think what I'm going to do is just uh, get ready and plug the drill press in and, and go ahead and drill a hole and see how it comes out. Hopefully uh, we'll knock on some wood that it doesn't, uh, we don't get much in the way or tear out uh, when we drill these. So this will be a this will be an experience. So away we go. All right, we're going to get ready and drill some drill some holes in this net. Um, I made a mark on this side of the uh, MDF, so all I, which is in line with the bit. So all I have to do is line up my uh, line up my mark that I made with the with the line there, and that'll that'll line it up with the bit. I got the bit centered uh, about centered in the groove, close close as you can get it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use a little clamp here to kind of as an extra hand to hold, help hold that on there. Um, so like I said, I'm a little concerned about tear out, but let's start up the drill press and see what happens. did three holes there and got a little bit of a little bit of tear out on the bottom but it's not too bad we can probably clean that up with some sandpaper and uh, maybe an exacto knife or something and then that way we can um, plus um, once we put the net on there and draw it up close it's going to cover up some of that stuff so I'm going to go ahead I got quite a few holes to drill all the way around here so I'm going to go ahead and keep going with that and once we get it cleaned up and get ready to put a finish on it, I'll uh, come back and show you how we're doing. Okay, we got the finish on our uh, fishing net. Uh, for that finish, I used this uh, True Oil, uh, which says it's gunstock finish. Um, when you read the instructions, it's basically a, 
linseed oil with some other uh, natural oil, oils and probably some kind of dryer or something because it dries pretty well. Uh, I've never used it before, but it, it says it's non-yellowing, and um, which is one of my major uh, reasons I wanted to use it. I don't if there's fishing nets laying around in a boat, exposed to a lot of sun or whatever. Hopefully they uh, it won't affect the color of it. It comes out with a pretty nice uh, sheen on it. You can see we got the holes drilled through there, and one inch on center. We'll drill. We'll be putting the fishing net on here in a minute. Um, overall, it um, really came out pretty nice. On this end, I put a little, uh, I put a eyelet on the end, um, and I'll tie some kind of lanyard or something to it. Um, had to do over again. I'm not quite sure I would put that on there, but um, what I did do is when I bought them, bought it, it was a, one of the zinc colored, which means it was shiny, uh, and I didn't want a shiny uh, eyelet on there, so I took a propane torch to it and basically burn off the shine so that worked out pretty well so what we're gonna do now is get set up and uh, show how we sew on the fishing uh, the fishing net which uh, for net I'm using a uh, rubber net um, I ordered it online it says it's uh, hook proof if you can see that um, which you know I guess it is um, it's also supposed to be uh, better on the fish if you catch it. It's not supposed to disturb the mucous membrane on the fish. Uh, so if you're doing catch and release, then the fish will go back uh, unharmed. And if you're not doing catch and release and you're going to take your catch home for dinner, then it really doesn't make any difference what kind of net you have. So we're going to get set up and see if we can't sew that net onto the, uh, to the loop and hoop, and then we'll be all done. All right, I'm going to show you how I lace this fishing net onto the uh, hoop that we made. Um, I got the hoop or the net mostly secured with these wire ties going around. I get them every third hole or so, uh, holding it on there. This rubber net's kind of heavy and it's difficult and awkward to hold in place while you're trying to lace the uh, twine around and uh, put the net onto the hoop. What I have is some. Uh, you probably can't see it, but it's very small. Uh, it's called lashing twine. I got 10 feet of it. I got the first piece connected to the net right here. I got a nice knot tight on there. So what I do is pull that up in there like that, and I got these sharpened 8-inch dowel. I basically stuck it in a little pencil sharpener and sharpened a point on it. And what I do is then once I pull that tight, I stick that stick that down in there, and that holds that. Um, that part tight and then it's just a matter of going to the next hole and feeding the line through uh, going underneath the uh, top row on the on the net it also helps if you don't put your chair on top of the twine that you're trying to loop through there so do that and then just basically go back over top of the top piece of the net go back out through the same hole. The twine fits into the groove we cut on the outside of the uh, outside of the net. Now what I do is I take a sharpened dowel and kind of use it as a, a little tool there to pull that tight. That rubber net grabs that um, twine and then you can't you can't pull it tight on the on the this side of it. So by using that little dowel, it, it helps. Then I just stick another sharpened dowel in that hole. And I just bring the, find the end of the twine again. Uh, it gets a little easier as the twine gets shorter. And just go through there, back out through the same hole I just came through. Pull it up. Use my little dowel there to get a nice uh, tight fit. And then pull that, take my first dowel and move it to that hole. And that's basically it. Um, you just keep stitching the uh, net on all the way around. Uh, and then when you get over to this side over here, then you 
tie it off fast to the net and then uh, that's pretty much done. After this the only other thing we have to do is tie a, some kind of little lanyard to the little eyelet that's on the end of the handle so um, let me keep on keep on stitching here 44 holes I've done three so I got 41 more to go. Well here's the net with the bag all stitched in I got it all uh, sewn in through the 40 some odd holes that are in the uh, the side of it there. I also uh, at the same time went ahead and cut in this on nylon uh, like lanyard for the for the bottom piece there to kind of have something to grab onto. So I will um, take some photos and post them for the uh, of the final product. Uh, it was a lot of fun to make and I hope you enjoyed watching the video. Okay, well that's how we made a, a couple of landing nets. Um, I said I actually made two of them. But one was a, a gift for Father's Day which has already gone off so I hope the recipient enjoys that. Uh, the second one I still have, not quite sure what I'm going to do with it yet, but uh, I'll find some fisher person uh, that's uh, interested in it one day and, and, uh, and uh, should be able to share that with them. So um, they were a lot of fun to make. Uh, I enjoyed making the videos and I hope you enjoyed watching them. Uh, don't forget to subscribe.